Why did A-Rod buy the T-Wolves? It's the genesis of every question. Alex Rodriguez announced over the weekend that he and a billionaire, and I'm going to get back to why that's funny, have entered into an exclusive negotiating period to buy the Minnesota Timberwolves for one point sink billion dollars. 1.5 bill for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Did anyone else read that and smile? Remember when A-Rod announced that he was part of a SPAC? I think A-Rod announced that recently. I don't know whether this purchase is within that SPAC or outside the SPAC. But that's not the important part of the story. A-Rod has been so desperate to join the business of sports, so desperate to be legitimized as the businessman he's always dreamt of being and never has been, so desperate to be in the room where it happens that he makes Aaron Burr look like someone who's been in every room. So desperate that he did a path to control deal, folks. A path to control deal is a deal where you buy a team at a future date. You make an agreement today and say, we will give you $1.5 billion for your team. You can keep running the team for the next X number of years, in this case, two. After that, we're going to take over. There are a lot of rules in these two years that you're running the team. We'd like to be consulted if you're going to trade away players. We'd like to be consulted, not have the final decision, but at least consulted if you're making any long-term sponsor decisions, long-term TV rights holder decisions, long-term season ticket holder rights and obligations, decisions, refund decisions, anything that you are doing to run your business in the next two years, we want to know about it because if it's going to do something that would have a negative impact on us inheriting the team two years from now, we want the ability to say, hey, hold on. Because of course, if you give someone a path to control in two years, you could do a 10-year sponsorship deal and say, excuse me, I'd like all the money up front. Now that becomes a contingent liability for the last eight years of a deal. If you do a 10 year deal and get paid it all in the first two years, and then the last eight years, the guy who owns the team has to satisfy the sponsorship elements of the agreement and gets no revenue for it. There'd be a true up after two years where the seller would have to give the buyer a bit of money from that sponsorship agreement. But I digress. A-Rod is not running that Minnesota Timberwolves team. A-Rod does want to be Jeter, which means A-Rod's going to have to move to Minnesota in two years to run the team as owner and CEO. Here's the chance that A-Rod is moving to Minnesota. Can you see it? Are you watching on YouTube at Nothing Personal with David Sampson? Please go to YouTube and just hit subscribe. Even if you don't watch this show and you just listen to it, while you're listening, go to YouTube Go to this nothing personal page and hit subscribe. I am holding my fingers together. You can't shine a flashlight through. You can't put a pin through it. There is no daylight at all. That means not 1% chance. That means there is a 0% chance that A-Rod is moving to Minnesota full-time to run the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, A-Rod may not have realized when he bought this team that the Minnesota Timberwolves play mostly during the winter. Winters of Minnesota are C-O-L triple D. If you looked at Miami and Minnesota on the map, they would be opposite. And I love the upper Midwest. I love Wisconsin. You know that folks born there. You know, I love it. I love Minnesota. I love people who live in Minnesota. I love counting the lakes when I'm in Minnesota and I've never gotten to 10,000. What I don't love is the prospect of living there during the winter. I wonder if he thinks JLo is going to visit him during the winter in Minneapolis. Maybe if she has a concert, but I don't think she's going to be jetting up there for a weekend where you have to stay in tunnels in the middle of downtown. Wait a minute. There's another possibility here, folks. Is it possible that A-Rod is buying the Minnesota Timberwolves to move the Minnesota Timberwolves to an undisclosed city? Could it be Vegas? Could it be Seattle, where he used to play baseball with the Mariners? Glenn Taylor, the owner of the Timberwolves, has said from the beginning, it is very important to me that whoever buys this team will keep the team in Minnesota. That and a dollar gets you a first-class stamp. (laughs) Coca, how much is a first-class stamp? I admit it. I have no idea. I'm going to guess. It used to be 18 cents. I'm going to guess with inflation, a first-class stamp in 2021 is like 55 cents. 
I always get those stamps that are evergreen stamps where you never know how much they are and they just work. So that's good. It's not really 55, is it, Coca? No, it must not be. Are you saying him? I can't hear you. Are you saying it is 55? Are you saying that I just guessed a first class stamp on the nose? All right, show over. I'm playing the lottery. Hold on. I'm stopping. Hold, please. Isn't there an online lottery or something I can play? Okay. The, the lottery numbers today will be 5, 21, 26, 69, and 88. Let's remember that. So why was I even talking about first class stamps? I have absolutely no idea how to land this plane. Why did that come up? Oh, because A-Rod has a some desire to move the team is my guess. Glenn Taylor said, we're not gonna move the team. And I said to you that that's worth about as much as a first class stamp. Do you know how to guarantee that your team doesn't get moved when your current owner sells it to a new owner? There has to be something called a relocation agreement or a non-relocation agreement, which is the type of agreement that we signed, not with Jeter, that we signed with the County of Miami-Dade in the city of Miami. And that agreement, which was signed when the stadium deal was done, stated that the Marlins were signing a 38-year lease to play at Marlins Park, 70, 60, 9. The Marlins were signing a 38-year lease to play at Lone Depot Park. There are no scenarios under which the Marlins may relocate. It's right there. Check it out. It's a public document. If we had said to the community when we came into Miami in 2002, hey, I know that John Henry didn't succeed. I know Wayne Huizinga didn't succeed. I know that Larry Lacchino has said on behalf of MLB that baseball in Miami is not going to work. I know there's no way to get a new ballpark, but I promise you we're going to do everything we can, but this team is not going to move. Don't believe me. If, however, we sign a document, then I don't have to say we're not going to move because why would I? I've never actually said in all the interviews anything other than check the document. Of course, the Marlins aren't leaving. Every time something would come up, everyone has such an issue worrying about the Marlins and the fire sales. Oh, my God, the Marlins are going to move. And I would say check the document. C T D. So Glenn Taylor stands up and says, I'm trying to sell the team. I'd like to sell it to Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett doesn't have the money. We're going to find someone who has the money. A-Rod's got the money. No, he doesn't. A-Rod found the billionaire to work with, like Jeter found Sherman. That worked. But where in the document does it say that A-Rod's not going to move the team? Remember, when you buy a team and you have a price on that team, you do internal projections. And your internal projections, while they're kept confidential, are based on what you think the future is of your company. Let's say it's not a sports team. Let's say it's a regular company that manufactures widgets. You say to yourself that your plan over five years is to open four more factories in four more cities to increase your sales fourfold. The payback on the capital expense is a five-year payback. We have depreciation that we can use for this transaction. Therefore, we are valuing this business at $1.5 billion. And we know the owner didn't do any of this. The current owner of the widget company was in one place. Can't even imagine that the manufacturing could be done in five places. When we tell him $1.5 billion, he's going to say yes, but we know the team or the company is worth $2 billion right out of the gate. That's how deals get made. People feel they can do better than the previous owner. So they buy the team at a price that it's not worth and then try to make it happen. When it doesn't happen, they either go bankrupt, they either raise more money, or they realize that they made a mistake and they overpaid. Sound familiar, DJ? So A-Rod has, has a plan. You don't offer $1.5 billion for the Minnesota Timberwolves unless you know exactly what you're going to do with that team to make that team worth that amount of money. A-Rod does not buy a team with a two-year path to control in a place that he has no interest in ever relocating. So for all you people in Minnesota who are all excited that A-Rod is always going to be sitting first row with J-Lo, 
it's NGTH. They may show up during the course of this transaction just to get a standing ovation to feel good. They'll jet in, mark my words, they'll jet in, they'll meet a few people in the community and jet out. I like the business move. I like the fact that A-Rod under all scenarios was in touch with Adam Silver. I like the fact that Adam Silver was able to say he got 1.5 billion for a franchise. I like the fact that Adam Silver can say that to the other owners, let A-Rod in, let him pay 1.5 because we're going to get another fee when he relocates because the current deal that the NBA is going to approve will not include a guarantee of relocation. I promise you that. Remember back in the day when someone bought the Seattle Supersonics for all you people up in Seattle, it was a guy named Clay Bennett. I don't know if you remember that. And he said, we are not moving this team. We love it. And we said, wait a minute, Clay Bennett, doesn't he have roots and stuff going on in Oklahoma City? Nah, he wants to be in Seattle. It's, it's, he's got his own plan. It's an easy fly. What's the big deal? Who doesn't want to be in Seattle? It barely ever rains. And by the way, there's a roof over where the super, Supersonics play. And by me saying that, it means I can't remember what it's called. I want to say it's called Key Arena. But now it's a new arena where the Kraken play. I just can't remember what it was called. Guess what happened to the Seattle Supersonics under Clay Bennett? Oh, yeah. They immediately moved. They immediately moved to Oklahoma City. In other words, don't believe anything you read or anything A-Rod says about this purchase of the Timberwolves. And just know that your team is potentially in trouble.